Hey audience, welcome back to the Shimmy Show. Mr. Shimmelise McBeb, Shimmy Triple X, on the mic right now. I haven't done an episode in a while, and this is uh, one of my old format shows without me showing my ugly face in front of the video camera. <laughs> I'm actually driving right now, so I hope the audio comes out okay. I'm in a rental. This is a uh, key, what the fuck is this thing here? Kia Optima. I don't know, I got it from the rental car place at the airport here. I got three more hours left on this road trip. I'm currently tracking from uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, up to uh, Canada, eh? Ontario, Canada. For those of you guys that don't know, Mr. Shimmy, I am actually a Canadian and an American. I got Canadian permanent residency over a decade ago. So now I'm actually eligible for full citizenship and voting rights. I can do everything in Canada except for vote, right? <laughs> I don't really see the point of voting for anybody in Canada, though, because the Queen of England runs that shit and she's on the money anyway. But uh, that's, that's not the point anyway. Uh, I roughly have about three hours left on my uh, road trip here. So I was like, you know what? Let me go and fucking do another show. So welcome back to the Shimmy Show. I'm going to address as much as I can without looking at the screen of my phone while driving, so uh, bear with me. Now, right now, it is, um, reading the dash here, it's minus 5 degrees Celsius, and I just left, uh, just left home a few hours ago. It's been a real busy motherfucking 24 hours. For those of you guys that don't realize, I get a lot of shit done, and I, I'm just all over the fucking map. I just got back from Columbia not long ago. Uh, I had a, I had a tenant in my house, and the motherfucker didn't pay rent for a couple months, so I had to come back and, you know what I'm saying, do that eviction shit and whatever, and, uh, you know, being a landlord's a motherfucker, so after this, I'm just, you know, cleaning, cleaning up debris, cleaning up drywall, cleaning up the mess and all that shit in my house, and I took a break from all that to come and fly up to Canada, because it's one of my son's birthday tomorrow, and I made a promise to him this last summer when they were with me, I'd come up and see him. So I'm a man of my word, no matter what, unless I'm fucking dead or in a coma or in a hospital or in jail or some shit, I'm going to come through on my promises, right? So with that said, I'm driving to fucking, uh, flew to Minnesota, got a rental, and I'm driving to Canada just because it was cheaper to do it that way. Uh, I'm not saying all this to, like, be like, oh, I'm bragging, I do this, I go here, I go there. I'm just, say, illustrating how busy of a motherfucker I am. And also pointing out that by not working for people and working for myself, I have the freedom, time, and latitude and flexibility to basically globe trot on a budget, of course, and uh, accomplish a lot of things, you know. I am not involved in a relationship. I don't have girlfriend, wife literally don't have no friends and shit, so I'm very much a, uh, a loner, I like being alone, but I'm the most productive when I'm alone, that's why I have time to do this blogging, run my websites, and, you know, I just look at shit and be like, oh, maybe I should go there, is that affordable, how much to go there, I'm gonna go travel there, take a trip right now, I have no one to, uh, ask for approval, <laughs> if it's, you know what I'm saying, a lot of people are handcuffed in relationships or they're handcuffed to their workplace or their job and they just can't up and go. And I realize this whenever I talk to people and I'd be like, hey, yo, let's go to fucking, uh, let's go to this place in Asia. Let's go to fucking Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Philippines, whatever. Or let's go here to South America, Central America, Costa Rica, Caribbean. And they're like, oh, I can't, or I got, I can't take that time off or I can't stay that long or whatever. And I never have that problem. You know what I'm saying? Because I work for myself, and I'm not in a relationship, and I'm not chained down, you know? Now, I'm not exactly uh, a total fucking monk or whatever, but I, don't, I, I realize that I don't have the chains that a lot of society puts on themselves, you know? I don't have... If you're, if you're not an emotionally needy person, which I am not, you know, I don't, like I say, I don't have girlfriends, wives, pets... You know, I have my kids, they live, they live in another country, basically. 
you know, I have them for the summertime, whatever, when they're out of school. But it's like, you can set your life up or you can engineer and pre-engineer your life in a way where you don't really have any ropes or strings holding you down and that's pretty much what I am now but I realize there's not too many people on the planet like me and most people can't stand the thought of even being alone you know just like I'm alone in the car right now alone in a rental car talking to myself I'm alone in my fucking house just the same either studying reading working out sleeping working on my websites whatever the fuck I want to do but my time is mine but literally, I, I have no other live humans to bounce ideas off of unless I leave my house. My home is where I recharge myself at. So, yeah, man. If you can get used to doing that, the world is literally your oyster. I've done it both ways. You know, I, I've been married before. I've had girlfriends before. I've had roommates before. I've done all of the above before. But I find that I'm definitely the most productive and the most full of energy and charged when I live alone. Matter of fact, just this morning, I did, I did another 5K race. This I mean, I, this has been a busy 24 hours. I, I, wake, I woke up at 5 a.m., uh, signed up for a race. The race started at fucking 7.30 or 8 a.m. today. So I, I did a 5K race this morning, packed my shit, came back, ate some rice and beans, uh, fucking jumped on a plane, and I'm um, headed up to Canada in a rental right now. I've, I've gone from fucking 90 degree weather to where it's now minus 5 Celsius. And in about two, two and a half more hours, I'm in another country and whatever with my kids. And then I'm back home very soon too. You know, quick turnaround trip this time or whatever. But I'm like, I have the freedom to do this. Because why? <laughs> I am single. And, uh, like I said, I'm just a lonely, uh, solo, solo dolo kind of guy or whatever. So one thing I want to point out, since you guys, this is going to be a long show, by the way. So it's just like, imagine you guys are in the passenger seat or in the back seat of the car with me right now, basically. And I'm just running my mouth, right? I was in Colombia for five or six weeks last month. And I did a, uh, I was bored actually, so I, I, did, I did a post on Reddit about my uh, fitness progress or some shit. They have, they have a, uh, a forum called Reddit slash R or whatever slash progress pics, right? And I was, uh, I was like on the, like the headline of that shit for like a week or so. Usually this forum it, it highlights usually fat girls that got skinny. They get the most shine or whatever on it. But it's pretty rare that a guy, a dude, is actually uh, monopolizing the whatever. Because everyone loves to see hot chicks on the internet. You know, men, men, dudes in general, nobody gives a fuck. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter if you just save some orphans from a burning building or this or that or whatever. You know, you, you get your 10 seconds of fame and it's over. But, you know, guys like pictures of hot chicks and halfway naked chicks or whatever on the Internet. So anyway, on this forum, it's basically highlighting people that show before and after pics. And people can do a uh, question-answer session about how you lost the weight and whatever or whatever. So I'm digging through um, some of my old pictures one day. I found a picture from 2008. And I took a picture in the bathroom while I was in Columbia just trying to, like... Uh, how do they say meme troll the other girls? Because it's like it's really it's a really popular thing on the internet and Instagram and shit lately for girls to go in the bathroom and take a picture of uh, I mean uh, not not so much a selfie but like to go take a mirror picture of themselves or their reflection in the bathroom mirror, uh, making stupid faces with their tongue out or whatever. So I just did that to just like troll and make fun of people. I didn't think they were going to take the shit seriously or whatever. So I, I, I put my 10-year-old 10 year, pic, 10 year old picture where I was like 300-something pounds side by side with my, my current picture just taken like a week or two ago. No, about two weeks ago or whatever before I came back to America. And uh, the, the, the thing that just lit read it up for like five or six days, which is really uncommon to have some shit up for that long. And everyone was asking me, how did you lose all that weight? What did you do differently? What's your secret? Uh, whatever, all this shit, and I was just like, wow, uh, okay, 
it is what it is or whatever. Now, since I'm driving right now, especially since I'm driving in the motherfucking snow right now, <laughs> in an unfamiliar, not even Japanese, I think this is a Korean car, Kia is, Kia is made in Korea, I think, so, you know, it's all right, car is a car, but, you know, it's not exactly standardized transportation for the rest of the world. I'm being very careful here, so I'm not going to look at my screen and go through the comments and questions and all that shit right now, but I'll just give you guys the gist of it. Most most people on there were telling me, dude, you do not look like you're uh, 39 years old, which I currently am. I'll be 40 in a couple months, actually, in January. So I'm telling them, like, uh, no, dude, uh, I'm 39 years old. And people were like, no, man, you don't look like, you look like you're barely a day over 17. And I'm like, man, my, my oldest son is fucking 17, and my youngest son is fucking 15 or whatever. How the fuck could I be 17, too? So they're, they're wondering, like, what are my uh, age-defying secrets or whatever or whatever, right? And I just told them, basically, I deleted all the stress and stressful people from my lives. I'm just, like, summarizing my thread here on the post. I deleted all the sources of stress from my life. I live alone. I exercise regularly. I don't go. I haven't been to a gym in over five years, other than for like you know, a day pass or a guest pass with the buddy or whatever, or some freebie day or some shit. But it's like no, I, I don't go to the gym. I don't lift weights. I act well. I do have a weight bench at my house, but I only ha I only leave on the incline bench or whatever. Uh, and I only do that like once a day, like maybe ten. 10 pumps the fucking incline bench of 100 pounds and that's it and I'm not even I'm not even regularly on that so I, I don't have a weight lifter bodybuilder type of body now I, I run for an hour in the morning and I do hit cardio for like 20 minutes in the evening and I wrote that one of my biggest uh, helpers was doing intermittent fasting I have done this before talked about um the benefits of intermittent fasting and BCAA powder and all this shit. And, uh, well, that was the anti-lock brakes here. They actually work kind of okay here in the snow. I don't know if you guys heard that. Come on, light, let's go. Red light, green light. Okay, here we go. <sighs> Taking off again. See what I was just saying about Korean cars? <laughs> This is a, uh, what the fuck is this thing? This is called a Kia Optima, if you guys know. I've never even heard of or seen one until today. Rental car people gave it to me. So anyway, yeah, intermittent fasting is this thing where I, I did some other post about it in case you guys didn't see it. That made the biggest difference of all in most of, most of my progress. It's something I started about, uh, about eight months ago, I think. To put it in a nutshell, I start eating it basically say 9 a.m. and I stop eating by 5 p.m., 9 to 5 or whatever, and after 5 o'clock there's no sugars at all, no food at all, just BCAA powder and tea, basically just zero calories, zero sugar, nothing to trigger my body's digestion progress until the following morning. So basically, chemical-wise, your body makes magic happen after a 12 hour mark of not getting any food or sugar in your body but most people don't do that they like go and snack at 8, 9, 10, 11 before bed and that fucks up the whole process all it takes is just like one grain of sugar basically to uh, make your body trigger insulin production and shit like that so there, there's a lot of uh, basically chemistry going on or whatever and that's what I attribute a lot of my progress and success six-pack abs and all that shit too look at some of my other uh youtubes or my reddits or whatever if you're interested in all the fine details of this shit that's not what i'm here to talk about today or whatever though even though i uh i love talking about that shit but the, the main thing i'm talking about on reddit is most people are like how did you do it how did you do it and i just tell them it's work and a big portion of the work is deleting the stress sources of your life if you have a lot of cortisol in your body, cortisol is a, like a stress hormone or whatever. Basically, if you're married, have girlfriends and shit like that, or have the stresses of like, you know, your bills, you got too much bills, too much debt, too much credit. All that shit takes a toll on you. That's why you probably have a fucking spare tire, muffin top fucking waist around you. 
and uh, until you get rid of that stress, it seems it's really it's almost like your exercise and all that shit's going to be futile because you're going to have low testosterone and a, a bunch of uh, you know like your levels aren't going to be correct basically in your body chemically, and that's going to be difficult for you to get in shape and it's like just stress is a motherfucking killer. If you take a look, I'm going to put this picture on the post, I guess, when I uh, upload the video. But if you look at my before picture, 2008-ish, back when I was, like, married and whatever, 300 pounds, fat, chubby face, no neck, fat arms, just looking all kind of fucked up and shit. That is the end result of having too much cortisol in my body and too much stress, bad food, bad sleep habits, no schedule, and just having kind of like an uncertain future or whatever. That will put you in the grave sooner than anything, you know, and I, I really wish that more people could uh, just take better care of themselves or whatever. One thing I do want to talk about, how I just mentioned that I live alone, a lot of people are scared to be alone. They have like these, uh, I guess you want to call them abandonment issues. They don't, they, they feel like they need to have somebody living inside their building, house, apartment structure with them at all times. And uh, I'm just not one of those people. I, I, I'm quite the opposite. You know, I, I recharge my USB once everybody's gone. I go running alone. I work out alone. You know, I don't have to, but I typically do like 90, 99% of the time. It's just the way I am. And uh, I just find like I could take much better care of myself and prioritize all my shit, put my life on timers when it's just me that I'm pretty much worried about. Once I stop trying to solve other people's problems and trying to fix the world and whatever, I'm like, man, life got like at least, it's more than 100% easier. It's probably like 300% easier measurably because I realized like if it's just me I got to worry about, well, fuck, it's not a problem. (laughs) I can put myself through... uh, probably more stressed than most people just because well for one being a long distance runner gives you good endurance and whatever but growing up as an only child not having anybody around to play with no brothers or sisters or whatever I was forced to entertain myself hence what I'm doing right now blogging podcasting while driving on a snowy highway up to Canada alone and perfectly happy with it And if more people could, like, basically practice this process, I think that their lives would be better exponentially. You don't need the validation of other people to go and do X, Y, and Z. I don't ever ask for anybody's opinion to be like, yo, should I go and go here? Should I go and go buy this? Should I go and make this investment? Whatever, this, that, and the other. I know it's often said that people should get, you know, wise counsel and, uh, you know, some kind of advisors. What the fuck is that sound? I don't know. This car has some weird bells and whistles on it. Traction control, I guess, maybe. But yeah, man, I, I don't need any validation. I don't, I don't need anybody's pre-approval. Now, I may, if I do, if I, I may ask some credible people if I'm making some major, major move or something you know, for advice or whatever, but for typical day-to-day shit that I've done before, I don't have to ask somebody like, hey, uh, do you think I should go out of the country now? Do you think I should do this? Do you think I should get involved with this? No, 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 no. I don't do that. I I don't do uh, approval validation seeking. A lot of people get stuck not even in first or second gear. They're just literally stuck in neutral if that's possible. And they don't go anywhere because they're waiting for somebody to give them the green light to say it's okay. If you're like that, you're going to miss out on a lot of great investment opportunities in life. You, I mean, the, the window to doing things I've learned, you know, ever since a teenager or whatever, I've learned, man. If you miss the window for a lot of things, trips, relationships, opportunities, whatever, those things are gone, man. You're going to miss out on a lot of great milestones in life, I've learned, if you got to wait around for your friends to come do shit with you or whatever. Real quick story from my childhood. I could, I mean, since I have a pretty good, you know, recollection of things or whatever, I don't forget shit easily. Uh, I believe I was in, tell the story about the 8th grade and the ninth grade, right? 
we had this class trip thing when I was both 13 and 14 years old, where at the end of the year in California, our school would take a, a, everyone in the class would go to this place called Santa Cruz in California. If you're from Cali, you already know what it is, but if you're not from Cali, I'll explain. Santa Cruz is basically, uh, they call it the beach, the beach, oh shit, this road's slippery, they call it the beach boardwalk or whatever, where basically they have roller coasters and, uh, it's basically like a carnival or whatever, and nothing too special, but if you live in the inner city in Oakland or whatever, it's nice to go and just see some shit other than the fucking slums and shit, right? So at the end of the year, everybody would pay fun, they'd do some fundraiser, class school, car wash or some shit, and every student would have to pay like 15 or 20 bucks to go on the uh, class trip or whatever, right, it was kind of cool, so for the 8th grade, uh, you know, I had some friends and whatever, I was trying to, you know, be in the in crowd and whatever, and I got, we all got to, you know, we got to the park or whatever, end of the school year, it's like May or June or some shit, and uh, a lot of my friends they were, they had phobias of, like, roller coasters and whatever, I don't have a fear of heights or speed or any of this shit or whatever, I I don't really give a fuck, right, but some of my friends were uncomfortable with going on, like, some of the wooden roller coasters or the ones that did loop-de-loops upside down, and, you know, they don't like centrifugal force ships or whatever, and I was, like, more like, I want to do all this shit, what the fuck, we don't have this in the you know, in Oakland or whatever, our school doesn't have even swimming pools or anything of that, you know, no luxury shit, so we're going to do everything or whatever, so, uh, but I was still kind of like one of those crowd following kind of people or whatever, you know, I wanted to be in the in crowd and all that shit, 13 years old, you know, 14 years old, whatever the fuck I was, so that first year in the eighth grade, I remember going there and I only got to go on like two or three rides and they weren't, they were like some bullshit, like bumper cars or Ferris wheels or some shit like that. And I didn't get to go on the roller coasters or whatever, or the log ride or shit like that or whatever the fuck they had. And I was kind of disappointed. Actually, I was, I remember being very disappointed or whatever. So the next year, I kind of did it my own way. Uh, we went back to the same theme park thing or whatever. And I ditched all my, uh, so-called friends, buddies, or whatever, and, um, more or less, I got to go on all the rides in the park by myself, but, like, two or three times, because I, what I would do, I'd go on the shit that didn't have no lines or whatever, and I didn't have anybody there saying, like, oh, I can't ride on that, or, uh, I don't do that kind of shit, or whatever, so I learned at a young age, age 13, 14, whatever, not everybody is going to be participatory in things that I enjoy. And if I want to enjoy stuff, I'm going to have to more often than not do it alone. And I got to be okay with that. I got to accept that. So I'm basically doing the modern equivalent of that right now. I mean, even though I'm going to see my own kids right now, it's like, so It's like so what? I want to go see Colombia. I'm going to go by myself. I want to go to Thailand. Fuck it. I'll jump on a plane and go by myself. And I would often, even, I'm talking like modern day times right now, I remember on my last trip to Thailand, we had a stopover and, uh, well, this wasn't this year, this was like the previous year, but anyway, same shit or whatever. Usually when you go to Thailand, you have a stopover in China or Manila or Japan or some shit like that. This particular time, I think I was in Taipei, Taiwan or whatever, and, uh, I was, like, waiting down in the basement where the other plane takes off, international departures. And uh, there was a couple there. It was a it was a Thai lady and, like, a white dude from Texas or whatever. And their boyfriend, girlfriend, or fiancés or some shit, I guess. And uh, the girl there says to me, you're going here by yourself? And I'm like, what do you mean? to Thailand, I'm like, yeah, I've been going for fucking four or five years straight by myself, I go with this, you know, whatever, what the fuck, of course I'm going there by myself, (laughs) right, and she was like, wow, you're so, you know, like, brave and independent or whatever, I'd never do that by myself or whatever, and that kind of stuck with me, right, so, you know, oh, Jesus, it's fucking really coming down here in the snow, um, I better slow down a little bit here, 
So I, I've, I've, I, I, I bring this up because I've heard this a couple times, you know, what is, you know, like I always eat in restaurants by myself, right? And typically if it's like a mom and pop restaurant, I will um, go and pay the tab at the counter or whatever. I want to talk to the fucking chef, cook, you know, waitress, whoever the fuck running the shit or whatever, or give them my thanks and just shoot the shit with them or whatever. And often while I'm going to pay the bill or whatever, I would have, there'd be, they'd say there might be another girl or whatever in the restaurant and she'd say she'd be going to pick up her takeout food. And she'd, I'd, she'd say to me some shit like, uh, uh, something along the lines of like, she doesn't like to eat alone. That's why she's got takeout food or whatever, or she never, or she would never eat in a restaurant alone. Basically like shaming me for being like this solo guy by him, by himself. Uh, like she's basically like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Most people... You know, where's your girlfriend or where's your date? Why are you, why are you doing this two-player thing called eating out by yourself? And I eat out by myself damn near 99% of the time. So it's like, I didn't really have an answer for her. She put me on the spot. Maybe this was a subtle way of hint, hitting on me or some shit. I don't know. But I mean, you will get shamed for being uh, a single loner guy. I don't know if I don't know if girls get this. They, they probably might get it to the more extreme, I guess, because I, I kind of have the theory that that most girls don't want to be alone. I don't know. Maybe somebody could chime in on that with me or whatever. But uh, maybe it's easier for guys to be alone than girls to be alone. Girls typically, even if they are single or don't have boyfriend, husband, or whatever, they'll have a fucking dog, cat, fish, bird, something. I don't have any of these things or whatever and don't care to. You know, if I had a fucking dog or whatever, I'd be like, who's going to feed my dog, my dog old buddy or whatever while I'm gone or who's going to look after X, Y, and Z. That's another life or whatever. I wouldn't treat, I wouldn't treat uh, an animal that lives with me like it's like a fucking, you know, inanimate object or whatever. You know, I, I just can't do that, you know. So that for those reasons alone... I'm not going to uh, have pets and whatnot just because I'm traveling so frequently or whatever. Or if I did, I assume they'd have to travel with me, etc. Holy shit, they need to snowplow this fucking road. I don't know if you guys can hear the uh, snow crunching under the tires here. I gotta slow it down, slow it down. So yeah, anyway, that that's uh, that's just one, one aspect of um, fucking my life there, you know? traveling but if you travel alone go to restaurants alone and do everything alone basically like I did when I was in this uh eighth or ninth grade you learn that holy shit it's very efficient to do this I don't have to worry about somebody else's or my partner's comfort level or whatever I don't have to worry about accommodating whoever whatever I can do a cross-country road trip and shower at a truck stop showers instead of staying at hotels if I want to keep going through the night or whatever. If all I have to worry about is my own comfort level. But I couldn't do that if I had girlfriend, wife in the car with me or whatever. Because, why? I'm going to be worried about, um, you know, I'm, I'm not an asshole like that. You know, I'm going to be worried about their comfort level too. I'm not I'm an not inconsiderate motherfucker. But when it comes to myself, I realize that I probably have a much higher tolerance of pain and patience than most people, you know, and that, that's one reason why I'm just uh, solo dolo. I mean, the other reasons are multiple, you know, why? I only got to buy one plane ticket. I only got to buy one meal, you know. You go out to a restaurant with your girlfriend and wife or whatever, it's very, very rare Unless she's a real budget-conscious couponer and shit. It's very rare that you're going to spend less than 50 bucks. I can go out by myself and have a great lunch or whatever for fucking $10 or less. And I can be generous and tip $5 or whatever. And still be, you know, whatever. You know, I, I realize now why married guys are always fucking broke. Why guys with girlfriends are always broke. It's because you're just paying double, triple all the fucking time bleeding out money. Now I see, like, when I was married, that's where all the money went. To fucking eating out and this and buying double, triple everything. Damn. 
So I'm just telling folks out there, like, hey, man, uh, that's how you can travel the world and see more and get more out of life, by just owning your own time. Even if you ain't got that much goddamn money or whatever to your name, you know? You can own your own time and do your own thing. That's how I'm able to live in other countries and uh, just travel and learn and just grow as a person, I think, you know? You can't be afraid to fucking talk to yourself and read and write and blog and podcast and put yourself out there. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that I'd be able to be a porn producer and be this this guy, this uh, my other my uh, the other side of myself that uh, does the video business and whatever. If I had a live-in girlfriend, wife, or whatever, unless she was also helping me or being a part of that whole uh, marketing business machine or whatever. And I haven't had that, you know, so it's like, you know, <laughs> unless, and I really don't, I think that's the reason why I'm single too. I, I, I honestly think that I would probably need to have like the Amish or Mormon Catholic Mennonite fucking plan or whatever, uh, where, where I would have to have fucking three to five wives because I don't think that it would be fair for me to put, uh, the same demands I put on myself on just one person, you know, I'd like to have fucking, like, for, for example here, hypothetically, wife number one could be my runner wife, you know, she wakes up and does my running in the morning with me and whatever, for an hour or two or whatever, and, uh, I, I would, I would consider that would be the only thing I would ask out of her, you know, I, I wouldn't expect her to also be a fucking runner, and a fucking porn star, and a fucking, you know, fucking author, and all these other, like, weird tangents, and hobbies, and skateboarder dude, and all this, like, traveler, and all this shit, you know, it's too much to ask out of one person, humans are not robots, and I realize that if someone has a passion for a hobby, they usually focus on, like, just one thing, and do one thing well, most people are not, like, decathletes, or heptathletes, or whatever, You know, that's asking far too much out of somebody to be basically a clone of myself, in my personal opinion. I I wouldn't, knowing how I could easily put myself in other people's shoes, I wouldn't wear another girl out like that. You know, that's why I say, oh, well, I just can only be, I I need, I need probably three to five partners, three to five basically virtual wives to be, uh content or whatnot, because I would, I would not demand the same level of performance from one, from one person, because why, because I know for a fact that if, if some, if a girl is a, if a girl is basically an elite middle or long distance runner like myself, that's going to take four to five hours out of her day just to do that one hour run, and only runners would know this, you know, a real runner would know that I wake up in the morning and I do like one hour of prep time before I run. Meaning like I don't just get up out of the bed, put my shoes on and start hitting the block. I got to get up, have have my cup of tea, BCA powder, vitamins. I got to, you know, stretch, you know, smoke, whatever. Get in, get in like, get ready, get dressed, get my shit on and whatever. Then go do it. And then after I go do it for an hour or two or hour and a half or whatever the fuck I do the run for... After that, I'm going to have to refuel my body, recharge, eat, everything. And that's basically four hours out of the day. And, you know, most people, that's extremely demanding or whatever to do that and then have to, you know, the girl's got to go then, what, go to work and do this X, Y, and Z and the other. I wouldn't demand that out of a girl, like to do that and everything else that I do because, I'd be fucking driving her into the a motherfucking early grave. And I'm not I don't have the heart to do that to someone. I wouldn't put anyone through that. You know, that that's bullshit, you know what I'm saying? So uh is what it is. Fucking is what it is. Jesus Christ, there's so much fucking snow on the road I can't even see the line in the middle of the road here. <laughs> it really it really comes down here in the Midwest, man. God damn. So anyway, yeah, man, this Jesus, fuck, those are the rumble strips, haha, <laughs> found them, so, um, that's what I'm saying, man, uh, 
that's why I'm solo dolo, and that's why I don't uh, have girlfriend, wife, whatever. But I, I think ultimately that would be my uh, my good plan or whatever. Kind of like how in Southeast Asia, okay, I, I have, um, I, I, I love Asian massage, okay, it's, I'm a fan of this shit. But I go to a couple different places, and uh, I, ha- I have some regulars, this, that, and the other, but I, I don't demand... I don't put excessive demands on one person, is my point. You guys can read into that however much you want, but uh, I don't. I don't think it's in anybody's best interest to uh, burn out another human or use them as a battery or energy source, because I've been in those shoes before. And uh, if you look at my before picture, that's basically me. That's basically my life there, me giving up my energy uh, for someone else there. You know, entirely, entirely trying to fix other people's problems. What the fuck's going on up here? Hold on. Let's see flashing lights. Oh, that's a snow plow. Wow. Er, slow down. There we go. Let's see what they're doing up here. I gotta proceed with caution. Yeah. So uh, you guys just look at look. I mean, read through the Reddit post or whatever. I guess I'll put a link to it in the description. It has all that shit about before and after and stuff on it. But that was like the most frequently asked question people ask me. Like, how did you lose all the weight or what was your secret or whatever? That's my biggest secret right there. Delete your stress. Do 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 the do the diet. Do the exercise. Do the fasting. But above all, delete the stress and own your own time. Most people will complain they don't have the time to exercise. That's because they haven't made themselves a priority. Until you make yourself a priority and own your own time, you're not going to have... You just can't do it, man. There's no way. Now now I see why people basically can't get in shape and this and that. They're too busy or too focused on fixing other people's uh, lives when they should be putting that energy and shit into themselves, and their time into themselves, and effort into themselves, so, I hope that explains some things, or whatever, yeah, Jesus Christ, I can't even see, there's like a big cloud of fucking snow in front of this snowplow here, alright, I'm gonna pause, or even stop this broadcast now, uh, no, no, no need for me to drag this on, I need all my concentration right now, I might make a part two to this thing later on, but until then, I'm going to sign out and cut it off for right now. Look at the Reddit post. Look at the uh, before and after pics and be the judge for yourself. I'm going to sign out. This is Shemmy from The Shemmy Show. Driving in the snow through motherfucking uh, Minnesota to Canada currently. And I'm going to sign out on that note. Follow me on Instagram, Shemelise McBeb, Twitter, Shemmy Triple X, YouTube, etc. This is Shemmy, and I approve this message. Peace out. Peace and hair grease. Later, skater. Bye-bye. I gotta pass this fucking snowplow. Hit pause on this thing. Pause, baby. Pause and stop. Hey, welcome back to the Shimmy Show. This is part two of this earlier show that I did about my uh, Reddit post on the before and after progress pics of uh, ten years ago, 2008, when I was 300 plus pounds and my current my current whatever picture where I I guess I'm like 160 or 160 something or whatever in the photo of the little bathroom mirror selfie I took or whatever in Colombia. Uh, I'm going to go on a side topic of this and talk about some of uh, my weaknesses that I've turned into strengths and continuing subtopics on that post, man. It's about shaming, uh, blackmail... <laughs> blackmailing the blackmail, how funny is that? And uh, some of the tactics that a lot of people have used, both men and women, over the years to try to uh, get me to change my ways, etc., and go off the path that I'm on. One thing that makes me different, and I mean extremely different, <laughs> than most motherfuckers out there, and even most people that have... Uh, these kind of blog and podcast channels out there is that I am basically unblackmailable and probably the hardest motherfucker on the planet to shame because I have so many negative things or so many negative strikes going against me already there's not too much more that uh, anybody else could add to the uh, 
stacked to make me feel any different or whatever, right? Most people have not, uh, they haven't been super duper fat or they haven't always been like the nerdy kid that's been picked on at school or they haven't, they might have been like one or, you know, one or two or three things, but not 10 or 15 items or whatever, you know? My strength, actually, is that I was such a nerdy kid. I was such a nerdy, fat kid in school that, you know, I never I never got... not. It was not only did I not have girlfriends or whatever, I didn't really have regular friends and shit either because I wasn't very athletic in school. To this day, I'm really not that either. Other than being like a, you know, a runner kind of guy or whatever, I'm not... I don't really excel at sports where that involve in kicking balls and shit like that. You know, I'm not good at basketball or football or baseball. And I remember actually even in the third grade, nobody would ever even pick me for sports because I was unable to catch a kickball. You know, like a motherfucker, we were playing kickball in the schoolyard in the concrete jungle or whatever because we didn't have grass at my school. You know, a motherfucker would play kickball and kick the ball to me. And I would fail in catching it like 100% of the time or whatever. They would say Shimmy, or they just called me Shim back then, which I hate being called, actually. You know, they just say, Shim can't catch, or whatever. You know, it would be like the third or fourth grade common saying, or whatever. They'd be like, don't pick that kid, you know, that little fat black kid, he can't catch the ball, or whatever, right? You know, so I was always kind of socially outcast for, for just many reasons. For one, if you're fat, you're slow, you run slow. And if nobody picks you, you never develop practice or motor skills to even catch more balls in the future or whatever, right? So this is a really interesting dynamic growing up. Not only are you teased by girls, you're also ostracized by guys and you're outcasted on the fucking fringe of society, basically. Your social circle's pretty fucked or whatever. So I became basically a nerdy kid. And from what I could recall growing up, most of my friends... They were uh, actually Chinese guys and girls who were in the math club and shit like that. I was actually in some corny ass shit. I don't know if they still do it now, but back in the day, a million years ago, they called it the Math Olympics. (laughs) Up until like, you know, elementary school and shit like that. So I was always doing these like honor, honor society bullshit extracurricular things like I was in this thing called the uh oh as as school progressed from like junior high school to high school I was in this shit called Mesa math math engineering science or some shit I think it stands for uh what else it was like some engineering club or some shit just like total nerd shit after school programs right what most guys are doing um after school football practice or whatever we're doing like physics lab stuff or we're trying to make like the perfect paper airplanes or we're just doing like lab experiments and shit basically that was my childhood or whatever you know what I'm saying so forever on that nerd shit most mostly with Chinese girls Chinese guys there was a couple of Vietnamese guys in the clique I think there was one East Indian guy and whatever and that was my circle of friends basically Asian and Indian, or whatever, they were also nerds, basically, you know, nerdy, nerd, nerd, nerds, not athletic, not, you know, immigrant family, shit like that, long motherfucking names, just like me, so that was, that was my upbringing, or whatever, so when you're in that super nerdy circle, you tend to stay in that super nerdy circle, and that's why I'm super nerdy shimmy today, I think, that's why I'm a webmaster today, that's why I'm that's why I'm a pornographer today. That's why I'm independent today because I never really had even though I might have wanted validation from the popular kids in school or whatever, I think being short and fat and unathletic and you know, I didn't know how to dress cool. I never had Air Jordans. I never had cool shit, quote unquote, like the other kids or whatever. All that bullshit jewelry and toolery or whatever. And a lot of that shaped me into being the man that I am today, you know. So it really made me get rejected a million, billion fucking times up to present day today, basically. 
And uh, I can tell you that rejection does not bother me one bit at all. Ultimate rejection eventually turns into ultimate confidence because I realize now as an adult, women and men, but especially women, don't have the power of shaming language on their side in their arsenal to shame me. That's why I can run around butt butt ass fucking naked on the internet or whatever. Fucking chicks this and that and not caring what people think. Because I never originally did care what I think. I never did get their va- other other people's validation, right? So it, it just thickens my skin to the point where I have like motherfucking armadillo armor. Dragon skin body armor permanently emotionally on me, right? And I realized that a lot of people don't have this, you know. It's like, uh, I mean, I, I let some of that go when, it, by default, whenever you open yourself up to someone, you're basically taking your armor off, you know what I'm saying? And then that's when people can pretty much get inside your head and hurt you, you know. That's happened on a few occasions, but for the most part, it's only, like, temporary because I realized, like, oh, well, this, if this person is trying to shame me, they're just trying to bully me like motherfucking bullies on the playground and that kind of thing or whatever, you know, so it's like, am I just revert back to that programming or whatever. I'll give you guys a couple examples even, you know, um, back when my marriage was fizzling out, uh, my, my ex-wife Geneva was, would often, uh, be talking shit or whatever, because it's very, it's very common for, for, uh, women to do that, you know, they'll talk that shit, oh, you're fat, you're this, your car's a piece of shit, you got a little dick, you got, uh, 18 other negative traits or whatever, and blah, 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 meanwhile, I never bother to hold up the mirror to people, and say, hey, how would you rate yourself, or what would you fix about yourself, or what would you self-reflect about, or whatever, uh, people, people often use their shame, that shaming language, to try to get you to bend to their will, right? But when you don't comply with that shit, you know, you're like, you're like motherfucking uh, Super Mario with the star. You're invincible, basically. But I realized that a lot of people in society don't have this thick skin, you know? As soon as a motherfucker criticizes them on an email or a fucking uh, Twitter or a fucking... Uh, uh, what's that, Facebook, or whatever the fuck people are doing, or whatever right now, they're immediately up in arms. Motherfuckers start doing the white knighting, you know, they want all their friends to go and chime in on shit and say, hey, this guy said this and this and this, come do this in my defense, and I don't have to do that, because I really don't care. When I tell you that I don't want you to like me or love me, I really mean that. I don't give a fuck. My ticket's booked to Thailand anyway, I got my apartment, my future set, all that shit or whatever, so it's like, do your motherfucking worst. Back when I first started shooting porn on the internet, as far as, like, me getting in front of the camera and being, like, an actual involved character in my own movies or whatever, some of the first things that people would throw out there at me and uh, randomly in the comment peanut gallery or whatever, they'd start saying, like, hey, man, that, that black guy, he don't... Why is this dick so small? What's up with this belly? Because I had like a pot belly at the particular time. Still pretty fat at the time when I started. Ten years ago. So whatever little things motherfuckers could comment on you about. Oh, he sweats too much. Bitch said I had hyperhidrosis once. Um, what else? Uh, anything at all they can think of. Anything. His eyes are too far, too far wide apart. His ears are too big. Is this, is that, is that. You know, whatever they can throw from the motherfucking apple cart at you and hope it sticks, they'll try that because they want to bring you down. But then I also realized that uh, why are people doing this or why do people use shaming language? Sure, they want to bring you down, but it's also a reflection of how they view themselves, right? I don't typically do this to people unless I'm purposely trying to fuck with them. And I don't really have any reason to purposely fuck with anybody the fuck is this beeping sound on this car? I'm still on the snowy highway, by the way. Almost there. Uh, Yeah, man, it it shows people's insecurities when they gotta start just throwing random motherfucking insults at you out of nowhere. This is especially apparent on um, a lot of my video channels or whatever. Usually it's jealous guys that can't get a date 
or whatever, or can't get no pussy, or can't do whatever, or they're jealous that the bitch I got is so fine or better than their bitch, or whatever, that they got to throw something at me directly. And I read these comments on the nightly and just laugh at them while I'm blazing up in my motherfucking hot tub or wherever I happen to be internationally because it's just like, it's total entertainment for me to watch people just piss on themselves as they're trying to make me feel bad. But I don't think they realized that I was always a fucking nerd and always the center of attempted shaming or whatever and that I've just grown numb to this shit. So I think that's what it takes in order to basically be a porn star or shoot porn or uh, do anything that I do, basically. You must have no shame. You can't be afraid of criticism and shame from your family and friends and your girlfriend, wife, whatever people you think that love and care about you unconditionally and shit like that. Your own mama, your own daddy, your, you know, fuck them. If you don't like what I'm doing, you ain't got to watch it. You don't have to participate. You don't have to acknowledge it. You ain't got to do none of that, man. It don't matter. It really don't matter to me, one way or the other. Like I say, man, my my trips are booked. Do what you going to do. People going to do what they do. But for those of you who don't do what I do, who don't work for yourself, who, that's another thing people will shame you about. Why don't you get a real job, quote unquote? That's some of the dumbest shit I've ever heard. You know, I've been hearing this for over 20 years, actually. When are you going to get a real job, quote unquote? Like, so I could be like everybody else, so I can't travel internationally and, you know, enjoy my life. <laughs> yeah, that real job shit. These same people, they, these same people who shame me, when I go ahead and Google them or look, just look up, go Google images or whatever on their name or whatever... These same people look like absolute fucking shit. You know, people on Reddit, when they saw this uh, before and after picture I'm going to put on this video or whatever, of me going from fat to fit and six-pack action figure G.I. Joe looking ass nigga as I am now. Uh, yeah, man, these same motherfuckers, they ain't been out of the country. They look like shit. They look like they're literally 30 years older than me. If they're not fat as fuck, they got lines in the face. They look like, I know some bitches, they look like goddamn Lego Minecraft characters. Like, their face has no female curves in them at all. You know, and that, that shit's just totally hilarious to me. You know, like, what the actual fuck, man? Why don't you look in the mirror first? Before you go ahead and start just openly criticizing motherfuckers. Some motherfuckers are so tore up, yo. They don't even have profile pictures. That's how bad a lot of people are. They're so, that When somebody doesn't have a profile picture. Or, or they don't like block you or some shit to that extent. It's like that tells me that they're personally afraid of being shamed. Because other people around them have already previously shamed them. And they're still feeling the sting of that. They haven't gotten cracked with the whip fucking 80,000 times like me. And they're not used to that shit. I'm used to it and it's become a source of entertainment for me. I think I actually should do a whole nother uh, thread or video where I just like start copying and pasting every fucking thing people have wrote about me in their best attempts to fucking uh, make me stop or slow me down or whatever. It's actually pretty funny to me. But it's probably not funny to most people. You know, most people take that criticism or quote-unquote bullying, as they call it now, uh, way too fucking personally, you know. Or their egos are so fragile that they haven't, uh, they haven't gotten enough of it, and therefore they haven't taken the catalyst to change themselves or whatever, you know. And I, I don't change myself for other people. I change and modify myself just to have a healthier lifestyle and a longer lifespan and to look better for myself in the mirror. When I watch my own movies, I want to see myself looking like a motherfucking statue. You know? Ripped. Strong. All that shit. Because I do watch my own movies now or whatever, you know? Yeah, it's good to look back and see like, yeah, I was in good shape back then. I was making progress there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's all for me. You know, and, and I feel like it makes me a faster runner and all that shit. So my, my, my health and 
fitness routine and diet and all that bullshit. It's really for me and for my own personal, personal vanity or whatever. But um, that shaming shit, it don't matter. You know, because I realized, like, okay, before when I was 300 pounds, people could say, okay, you're fat, you're fat, you're this, you're this. And I'd be like, okay, well, that's factual or whatever. Well, they can't fat shame me now that I got fucking six-pack abs. Some nigga said I have a fucking ten-pack abs. <laughs> I got all that shit on the sides and everything and all that bullshit, under, fucking, uh, underwear model looking fucking body and shit or whatever now, so they can't shame me on that level, so they'll, they'll just start talking some other shit or whatever, that's how I know people are full of shit, right, but some dudes will let girls fucking really run them into the ground, you know, and if you really care about, I'll, and I'll, I'll be frank about this here too, it's like, if you got a chick and you think, quote unquote, think in air quotes or whatever, <laughs> if you quote unquote think she cares about you, you're going to value her opinion if you're a normal human being or whatever. And I'm the same way or whatever too. I was personally shamed by uh, some of the girls and friends I've had in my life and it, Pre, even despite despite the nerdy upbringing that I talk about or whatever, I'm not I'm totally 100% immune to this shit. But I had to step away and look at shit objectively as to, like, why they did what they did now. And it took me a couple months to, like, study everything or whatever. And I realized, like, oh, they're just doing this because they realize that I'm better than them and I made better choices in my life and I'm in a better position than them. And I studied a lot of these girls' comments or whatever and realized, like, damn, they're just real fucking haters. Jealous ass bitches. They're jealous that I fucked these, you know, literally girls in high numbers, four-figure ranges and shit like that. They're jealous of that. They're jealous I don't have to go to work or I don't work for someone, that I don't have a boss they're jealous I could go travel to the other side of the planet for fucking half the year still have my own home to come back to I have the respect of my kids the respect of my peers the few that I do have that actually matter and I'm just in a better position while they're just grinding the fucking away basically to the motherfucking grave and little shit box apartments buying cat food and whatever or dog food, or whatever the fuck their little, uh, you know, man substitute pet is, basically. So yeah, that's why. They feel bad for themselves, and they're projecting. They're psychologically projecting. Now I understand why they do it. It's really, for me, it's important for me to understand the motive or motivation of why people do shit. That's why I study people so deeply, and I look for answers deeply. Because I always say to myself, there must be some reason why people are behaving like this, or why their behavior changes or turns a 180 or whatever. Now, as far as the anonymous people who don't know me, I'll give you examples about the uh, people that bitch or him and haw about me on my uh, my adult video channels or whatever, right? Say a motherfucker will play a trailer or whatever, a little free minute or two trailer, two minute, three minute or whatever. Some people say my trailers are too long, you know, whatever. It might be. I'm going for, aiming for a minute and 30 seconds lately. People got a short attention span and shit. But, uh, yeah, say the, the peanut gallery crowd, I call them, will leave comments on the motherfucking little shit or whatever. Most of the time, this motherfuckers talking shitty. If they're not saying the girl is like fucked up or busted or some shit, which she's she's usually not busted or some shit most of the time, you know. If they're not complaining about the girl, they're complaining about me. Oh, this dude, his dick's too short. Oh, he don't know how to fuck. Oh, if I was in that room, I would have done that. Oh, this that. And the, the most, the most uh, detailed, uh, fucking hater troll comments come from girls actually. I didn't realize that girls watched porn that much, you know? Now I know that they do, especially if they know me. But for the ones that don't know me, you know, they'll just get on that shit and they'll talk that shit. Oh, well, why is this? This guy's got a little dick. Oh, he's this. He, oh, he's so short. Oh, he's that. Oh, he's that. And I'm like, wow. 
And I say to myself, well, if these girls are saying this, let me see their videos, or let me see their channel, or let me see this. Oh, wait a minute. They don't got one. Ah, okay, now I get it. Now I see what's going on. Oh, rumble strip. Ah, so that's really, uh... That's really the gist of it, man. I don't, I don't want to beat this topic into the ground or whatever, but just me growing up, growing up being the little fat, nerdy, short, half black, half Ethiopian, round, roly poly motherfucking shimmy is really what kind of shaped me into the shimmy that I am. And I took that shit to the next level once I stepped in front of the camera butt ass naked. So. Attack me if you dare, I will crush you, in the words of Ken from Street Fighter 2. What the fuck are you actually thinking trying to shame me? This also goes for the OJJDP, ICAC, and Indian country. I try to try my best to include them in all my posts and their document. Google uh, b4pp.pdf. Just go type that into Google and you'll see what I'm talking about. They try to shame me into talking all this shit. Oh, he's this, he's that. He's he's a wannabe pimp. He's doing this, he's doing that, and this and that and the other. And it's just more shaming language to try to turn me into like this bad character when I'm just a motherfucking nerd that always has been a nerd. More shaming, more public humiliation. The news does it too or whatever too. But uh, it, it is what it is, yeah. All right, let me go ahead and... Uh, what the fuck's going on up here? Let me pause the show for a second. Okay, there we go. That was a snowplow going by. Wow. There's a lot of snow on the highway right now. I haven't driven up to Canada in the motherfucking snow. I really try to avoid this shit as often as possible. But you know how it go. You know what a pimp do when it's his kid's birthday. We traverse through this shit. Through rain, sleet, or snow. <laughs> yeah, man. So that's, that's my take on shaming language. So you guys don't feel bad when your girl starts talking that shit about, uh, oh, your dick's too small, this and that. Maybe her pussy hole is too fucking big, or maybe everything in actuality is just fine, but she doesn't have any other front to attack you on that she thinks is valid, you know? I've often heard that, uh, this is common with white girls, actually, with who have, like, uh, white guy boyfriends or any other non-black boyfriend or whatever basically or non-African boyfriend or not you know they'll start shaming the white dude's dick size or the Asian dude's dick size or whatever and start you know whatever or they'll get a black guy you know like me even though I'm not a big dick nigga or whatever just to kind of emasculate the dude and I think that's pretty fucked up too you know I see what these girls are doing because often I am that guy or whatever. You know, I I had a girl once tell me uh, she was just dating me because, like, get back at her daddy or some shit or and daddy issues come into play often. But it, but it's like, uh, it, it's some of that shit, you know. I, I think that's not cool at all, but I am conscious of what's going on or whatever, you know. It's just the games that people play. Women do not like to get shamed themselves or shunned. I, th- I think it probably hurts hurts them more than it would most guys. When you look when you when you look on the news, there was actually a story. Uh, you know, all these like motherfucking guys that snap become motherfucking mass shooters and shit like that. Most of the time, they are divorced, fucking lonely motherfucking guys that lost their job, this and that, and they got people shaming them left and right and whatever. Oh, you're not a real man, quote unquote. Or you're this and that and that and that and that. You're a failure. You're a this. I have, um, just for you guys' information or whatever. Thank you for that information, sir, as they say in the Philippines. Um, I have at least, I could fill up probably about seven or eight pages just from copying, pasting emails from my ex-wife's, uh, just, she would just randomly angry email me all, just, I have just paragraphs and paragraphs of no reply emails of, uh, all shaming language shit that she would use, or just throw at me or whatever, 
and I used to wonder, like, God damn, this 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 is the woman that I bought a, you know, two hundred, three, whatever, half quarter million dollar homes for, the woman I've bought Mercedes Benzes for, the woman that I've taken from, uh, you know, shit box apartments to luxury homes and elevated her standard of living exponential notches overnight, literally. Gave up my fortune, this and that and whatever for, and here she is now talking about, uh, you know, all this punk ass shit. Oh, he's just co- a common line that I, I read all the time, and I'm not, the, she's not the only one to use these lines or whatever. A, a line that a lot of single moms will use on their, on their baby daddies is, oh, you were just a sperm donor, quote unquote. It's like they're following some pre written script. You know, they'll say shit, you're a sperm domer. That's why you got a small dick anyway. Yeah, man, if I could, it's like it's like a little kid, like a little girl playing jump rope teasing you on the playground with some nan nan the nan nan shit or whatever like that, right? You know? Meanwhile they, they look like a motherfucking hippopotamus crossed with a refrigerator with Down syndrome and shit. You know, I mean just ridiculous, redonkulous, ridiculous kind of shit, and it's not, I'm not, I'm not specifically singling her out or whatever on that topic, but I mean, I think a lot of girls do it, I've seen a lot of girls do it firsthand, and it's just this emasculation thing or whatever, and if the dude really loves the chick, he's gonna be hurt, he's gonna be like, damn, and that's the whole point, a woman's aim, I think, If she is hurt or feeling like she got the short end of a deal or she's just pissed off or pissy or bitchy, she's going to try to emotionally hurt a man because she knows she's not physically strong enough to just fucking kick his ass or whatever most of the time. You know what I'm saying? Most of the time. Now, I'm actually probably half the physical size of my ex-wife in this case, but she'll still try to fucking... uh, rock'em sock'em robots with me or whatever but that shit doesn't matter because me as a guy at the end of the day I have I have the ball sack meaning I have testosterone in my body flowing through my veins and even though I'm a short little black motherfucker I'm dense my bones are stronger my lung capacity is bigger my brain is 10% larger Every, like my organs and everything are more internally hardened. I have stronger legs, even little ass arms that are stronger than her fucking sausage ass arms or whatever, you know. So it's like that is all that they can do. The mind game, the emotional game, the rules book by Ellen Fine that <laughs> she goes by. <laughs> All that a woman can basically do to you if you're a guy, most guys are taller and bigger than me and stronger and all that shit. You know, if, if you're if you're a six foot four ass nigga, there is no way in the fuck that a four foot eleven, five foot two girl can physically dominate you unless she fucking kicks you in the nuts, punches you in the solar plexus, or chokes you, or fucking poisons you, which I've seen before too, all of the above. And uh you know, their, their arsenal of dirty tricks is very limited. So what they're going to do is try to get inside your head and just fuck with the wiring. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's, it's like some nigga going to your fucking... Fucking with your car under the hood while you're sleeping and cutting wires from the wire harness. You know, or go and, go and pull out in a Volkswagen the fifth fuse from the left that controls the fuel pump so your car won't start. You know, little some little small time thing to sabotage something which is highly effective but requires little physical strength or whatever to implement, you know. And me being the nigga that I am, it don't matter. It really don't matter, especially once I figure out what punk ass bitches are up to. So the shaming shit don't work for me, but it will probably work for the average guy who gives a fuck and who seeks out validation from girls. If you don't seek out validation from girls or guys, you don't give a fuck. This is the reason why I wear bootleg running shoes from AliExpress, Alibaba, or whatever. I don't care that my clothes are bootleg most of the time. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck. I don't follow trends. I haven't worn a watch in over like 10 years. I don't have a fucking iPhone. The fuck am I going to do 
with a fucking thousand dollar piece of plastic in my back pocket that's gonna break and be worth nothing in a couple months, you know, it's like, what the fuck, I'm just the kind of nigger that doesn't like buying the same hard good material shit over and over every four to six months, just because, I just recently gave up fucking using a Blackberry I've had forever after a nigger finally stole it in Thailand on the beach, you know, I don't care, people would say to me, man, you still got a Blackberry, I'm like, yeah, it turns on, I don't really have no punk-ass bitches or niggers or mark-ass niggers to fucking talk to that I want to talk to even most of the time. So I don't need all that bullshit. I don't need all these goddamn apps and whatever the fuck that you guys fuck with. I just don't need most of that shit. You know? I don't see the advantage to having all that. So don't keep up with the trends, man. No Air Jordans here. No fucking tight, skinny jeans. No sagging baggy jeans, no gold chains, no platinum jewelry, uh, whatever the fuck niggers are doing to like look cool and fly and hip. I don't buy, I don't buy it. I don't go shopping. I hate retail shopping. I hate shopping. Period. Actually, as far as cars go, I got a 20-year-old Volkswagen. Same shit I've always driven for the last 20 years. I don't give a fuck. You know give a fuck about trends, I do what I enjoy, and what's comfortable to me, and what feels good, and uh, speaking about cars, nothing is more satisfying for me, now right, just, just to give you an example right now, uh, Volkswagen, VAG, Volkswagen Audi Group as they call it, VAG, Vagina, I joke with them now, uh, I've had almost every Volkswagen ever made up until the fifth generation, I think. I think I stopped collecting them at Mark V or whatever. They're currently on the Mark VII model, right? The one I drive is a Mark III model from 98. It's the car they made from 93 to 98, right? Four generations of Volkswagens have been on and off the road with my car, so it's amazing to me to watch four generations of cars basically die and go to the scrapyard on tow trucks while I'm still driving the same fucking shit from the 90s or whatever and it's still running strong and I still got all that money in my pocket from not buying the same fucking car four or five times over because I know they engineered the shit correctly and properly back in the day. They, they put out some bullshit now. I'll rant about Volkswagen. I'll actually have a little fucking lawsuit going with them on the side or whatever for some... Uh, shit or whatever, but unrelated to that thing, I can't talk about that, um, the last Volkswagen I had, man, it had intake manifold made out of fucking ABS plastic, back in the day, they were made out of cast iron, shit lasts forever, real German war machines, you know, I like that shit, they're on some pussified shit now, and I don't, I don't fuck with it. I want, I want the real thing built in Germany with, where the VIN number starts with the letter W, not with 1, 2, or 3, which means they assembled, assembled it in Pueblo, Mexico, or in their plant there. So, yeah, just ranting about car shit or whatever. They don't make them like they used to, for sure. But um, one thing for sure in life, if you quit buying the same shit over and over... If you quit buying the iPhone 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, whatever they're on now, you're going to be all right. You're going to be much better off. I, I currently have a, that picture I took on this thing was taken with a $29 phone. I think it's, uh, looking at it now, it says it's L, LG or some shit on the back. I don't know. I don't care. It'll be broken soon enough. Now, mind you, if shit's, if shit's cheap enough... Like my running shoes that I'm wearing right now from AliExpress, they were $23.50 with free shipping. You know what I'm saying? Hirachi or whatever, but not the real thing. They don't say Nike on them. They say, like, fashion sport shoe or some, <laughs> some little fucked up logo, but it's the same goddamn shoe from the same factory or whatever. If some shit's cheap like that and it's, ex it's like a expendable thing I'm going to burn up and only use for three weeks... Okay, I don't mind buying that shit again. But if it's a big ticket item, a television, t t television, phone, car, tool, that shit needs to last. I don't want to have to buy another one of these things for hopefully 
at least with the way they, the way they build shit today, five years. But if I get ten years out of something, I consider it good. You know, I'd much rather have durable, hard goods for something that I use every day. You know, they always say that you should spend your money where you spend your time. You know, what's the point of you having a fifty thousand dollar car? If you have to work your ass off for it. And, um, you know, all you're going to do is look at it from your motherfucking workplace or office building or whatever, parking lot, all fucking day long. As the sun bakes it and fades it, and it ain't worth nothing in five years once it's almost finally paid off. What's the fucking point of that? You might as well just let it sit on the fucking car lot and fade. You're not driving it. You can't... For something that you can only use motherfucking 2% of the time, the other 98% of the time is it's off, the key's not in it, it ain't burning gas, it might as well just be on the motherfucking uh, dealership lot as far as I'm concerned. Might as well have some shit that you own outright, I say. That's how you can get ahead in life. All that shit adds up. All, and realize that all your dollars here, every dollar that I spend here feels like it's worth eight times as much in Thailand or in Colombia or in certain other countries that I go to. So I don't want to squander any money here in North America if I can help it. I treat every dollar like it's worth five or six or seven, eight or nine dollars. You know, and that way when I'm abroad... I can live like a king. I don't think people get that. But if you've never traveled, you don't know these things. I'm telling you from experience, that's how the world operates or whatever. You know, I like, I like to get extended value for my money that I do work and toil hard for. I don't feel like I can get that value in the United States or Canada. It just it doesn't feel like it's there. You know, it is what it is, man. All right, but well that's really my topic there, though. So the light, the lesson of the day here, if if, uh, if people are shaming you, it's because they're insecure themselves. They're projecting their own uh, whatever onto you. And uh, there's a reason they're doing that, because they can't be you. <laughs> they might want to be you, they envy you, and they're just trying to take you down a peg to their level. That's all. You can go for it if you want to. I don't advise that you do. Nobody's ever going to criticize you if you're if they consider if they consider you to be lower than you. You know what I'm saying? They only do that if they consider you to be high up. That's why they want to take you a notch down. They see you spreading your wings and just soaring like a fucking eagle, and they're like, "Oh, no, this nigger didn't." I'm gonna try to get on his case so I can fucking bring him back down. That's why you don't have to have people like that around you or whatever. Or strangers like that around you. Just don't look for validation and then people can't shame you. When you say you don't care, you really got to believe that shit. When you say that you don't want people to like or love you, you really got to believe that shit. That way people ain't got no leverage on you. And that's really the bottom fucking line. Alright? Hope this has been informative. Anyway, I'm going to sign out here. I hear the rumble strips here. I better pay better attention to the road here. I'm almost there. Shemmy from the Shemmy Show signing out. Peace and hair grease. Again, um, Google me. Whatever. I, this is my real name, by the way, people. I'm, I, I am not afraid of being shamed if I'm a butt-ass naked nigga on the internet. You can Google Shemelis, Shemelis McBeb. It's my name on Reddit. It's my name on YouTube. It's my name. Just Google fucking everything. That's me. I'm Shemmy. That's me. I'm proud of everything with my name on it. So there. <laughs> Nothing to hide from. You know, I don't have to, I don't care about all that shit. My profile picture is really me. This is my real name. A lot of people are like, what if they dox you? What if they this? Well, that's, they must have a whole lot of free fucking time if they want to do that. But it's not going to serve them any fucking purpose because I don't fucking care. I really don't fucking care. Have fun. Burn up the finite hours of your life fucking with me if you want to. But it's not going to affect me. I can tell you that right now. It's just more shit to fuck with and laugh at while I'm in the hot tub with the J putting it in the air.
So anyway, that's it. I'm signing out. Shemmy from The Shemmy Show. Y'all have a great day. Peace and hair grease. Out of here. Bye.